ever tried to build a library with books on ancient Egypt and been floored by the sticker shock? Find out why on this episode of Ancient Egypt and the Bible. Today, we are going to talk about the life of used books, particularly used books about ancient Egypt. If you like these videos and would like to support the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps. And if you wish to support this channel financially, please consider becoming a Patreon member or purchase by purchasing my forthcoming book, affiliate link below. Now, let's say you are starting to develop an interest on ancient Egypt. Or, let's say you've started to pick up learning a little bit of hieroglyph and want to practice your newly found skills with some hieroglyphic texts. So, you decide you want to go out and start buying books on ancient Egypt. And you logically think, let's go to the used bookstore and get some books on ancient Egypt. And you discover that your local used bookstore has a small section on ancient Egypt. And you think, fantastic! So, you arrive at the used bookstore, you walk in the front door, you see some novels for sale, you know, they're 20 cents on the dollar of the list price. I think, well, this is great prices. Fantastic. You see some cookbooks. They're half off of new. Even better. Wow, this is a great, great bookstore. And then you find a book on ancient Egypt. And you look at the sticker. And it says $1,000. And you're thinking, this is almost a new book. It's less than 10 years old. How can a book that's less than 10 years old be worth $1,000? This must be some kind of mistake. But it's no mistake. And this is actually quite normal for books on ancient Egypt. And recently, other ancient Near Eastern specialties like Assyriology and Archaeology have begun to notice something similar with their used books. So what is happening? To explain, we need to talk about the life cycle of books. Generally, when a book is published, most sales happen in the first three months and then gradually trail off after that. If a book is popular, that is, it's profitable for the publisher, then the publisher will reprint the book. And the publisher will reprint a book for as long as it's profitable. That is, it sells copies. Once the publisher deems the book no longer profitable, the publisher declares the book out of print and then stops offering the book for sale. And this is where things get interesting. Now, out of print is not the same as sold out. The truth is that most academic books only sell a few hundred copies but the publisher may have printed a thousand copies or more. So the publisher might have hundreds of books in the warehouse that they cannot sell and cannot move. And books being stored in a warehouse that cannot be sold cost money to store. So the publisher will either sell the excess copies to an overstock, discount, or thrift store bookseller or they will simply destroy, or what they call, pulp the book. And at this point, the only way you can get that book is used from a used bookseller. In most cases, a used book will cost a lot less than a new book. By the point a book goes out of print, there is usually a ready supply of used books on the market, 
demand is low, and as a result, the prices fall. However, what happens in the case of books on ancient Egypt is that after a book goes out of print, the demand spikes. The reason is because books on Egypt start to be known by the general public only after a couple of years. And typically, this happens after the book has already gone out of print. And any material on ancient Egypt, especially if it contains hieroglyphs, is very attractive to people with an interest in the occult or who are antiquarians, basically people who like ancient things. These two groups will quickly grab most of the used copies off of the open market. The other group that will grab copies off the open market as quick as possible are used booksellers. And the reason why is because they know how much those books are going to be worth in just a few years. They do it as a form of investment. So you're not only competing against, say, people interested in occult and ancient things, but you're also competing against other used booksellers who want to profit off what these books will be in the future. The effect of this is that the prices of used Egyptology books can go through the roof. The asking price of these books can easily reach the hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in just a few short years. I have seen copies of Seth, God of Confusion, sell for $8,000. And Kenneth Kitchen's Ramesside Inscriptions Volume 3 fetch $1,400. So, what do you do if you want to start accumulating a good Egyptology library. If the book is already out of copyright, it might be available as a PDF file on sites like archive.org. So that covers books that are really, really old. Now, your best chance for getting a good price on Egyptology books is to buy them when they're new. One avenue that you should consider is buying the book at its pre-sale price, that is, before it even goes out on the market. One of the things about pre-sale books is they're often heavily discounted so that the publisher can cover the costs and to start getting the book circulating so people can start reviewing the book as soon as possible and really start generating interest and discussion about the book. The other two places you can get good, good deals on books is, first of all, you know, online booksellers. Often these books are also heavily discounted while they're new. Places like Amazon. I'm sure everyone knows about that already. And the other avenue for getting good, good prices on new Egyptology books is professional conferences. Half the reason why people go to conferences on ancient Egypt and the Bible is to buy the books. The booksellers are there and will often sell these books at tremendously discounted prices, sometimes up to 60% off. Because they want to, again, generate that interest and get people really sort of interested in the content of the book and that discussion going. So those are three avenues you can take where you can get the best deals on new Egyptology books. Again, pre-sales, online booksellers, and professional conferences. Now, unfortunately, once these books go out of print there's not much you can do. The forces of supply and demand then take over, and demand drives the price out of reach. Rarely, libraries will sell off their discards not knowing their value. But this is rather hit and miss, and frankly, there's a lot of those used booksellers that go to these library book sales looking for these books. 
because that's their big payday is when they buy these books. So it'll be unlikely that you'll ever get these books again at the original list price if there's something special you're looking for. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on Ancient Egypt and the Bible.